Okay, so I'm going to process these two photos I just took on the bridge in uh, Saigon. And you just saw some of the process. So I've already highlighted the two raw files. And I'm just going to show you really quickly how I process these raw files. It's really not hard or intimidating. Just You're just moving more or less some sliders to kind of give the picture a little bit of pop. And uh, <clears throat> let's get started. I'm going to work on both of them at the same time. Let's see what we got here. Um, cool, cool. So the first one is on one side of the bridge. You see the downtown skyline. And the second one is just a bunch of uh, baller apartments for the, you know, the rich gangsters in uh, Saigon on the other side of the bridge. So let's just start with this one. Um, <clears throat> some people are really stickler about matching both pictures, colors, and stuff if they're shot in the same location at the same time. I treat every picture individually, you know, like an individual piece of art. And um, I'm, I'm not the type of photographer at all that goes by rules or like a certain list of things you have to do, you know, zeros and ones, and the, you know, textbook by the book type things. Um, I'm, I'm a visual artist, so I trust my eye and I just kind of make decisions based on my eye and my art background. So, <clears throat> with that said, I feel this is a little dark. I'm going to boost up the exposure. I don't know. Okay, it's too bright. There. It's good. Because I kind of want to give it a glow. And then I'm going to boost the contrast. Um, actually, if I go down to the blacks and I hold down the Alt key, kind of shift this down until I get some blacks creeping in. <clears throat> and let's see, uh, the clarity slider. We'll give it a little bit more pop right there. The highlights are a little too bright, so I'm just going, going to uh, move the highlight slider down. Actually, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see how much of the highlights I'm doing that. Uh, see, like if you look at the light up here, for instance, how blown out it is. Look what you can do with the raw capture if you bring the highlight slider down. You can actually see the individual windows and lights. And I'm bringing that all the way down to minus 100. I think if you go to this panel here, you can actually perhaps bring it down a little more. But I don't want to bring it down too much because <clears throat> if you do, it's going to take away from the contrasty of the lights and the darks and it's going to look kind of dull. Um, I'm going to press the P just to see where we're at here. Um, saturation a little bit. Maybe vibrance. <coughs> look at these dust spots on my sensor. I need to clean my sensor. Yeah. I'm all doing this by my finger on my MacBook Pro trackpad, by the way. I'm not using a uh, Wacom Intuos tablet or stylus because I'm too lazy to plug it in. So this just goes to show that anyone can do this. Um, let's see. Well, you know, I usually don't touch the sharpen feature. Um, because you're going to <clears throat> bring out the noise anyway. Or you're going to make the noise sharper. So it's like pick your poison. Do you want noise or do you want uh, soft pictures? But basically with these sliders all I'm doing is I'm kind of massaging the raw file until I get it where I want, you know, with a nice contrast. What's the white balance here? Looks like it's as shot. Now if I go on to auto, well, there's not much difference there. I'm going to go to fluorescent. Ah, I kind of like that. If you look at a lot of my cityscape photos, I do a lot of, uh, I give it like a fluorescent blue tint because it almost gives a very cool steel sci-fi type look to it. Um, add just a touch of magenta. And that, that looks really cool. <coughs> I'm going to have to crop this a bit. 
uh, in Photoshop. I suppose I could do it here too. But I usually use Photoshop to finish my photos. Uh, I don't know, do I want to do anything? I don't think I'm going to do anything with this dark area. I could lighten it up, but <clears throat> it doesn't. I don't want to get it to the point where everything needs to be lightened up. You know, I want a nice, good contrast of lights and darks. So that looks like it could be good. Let me hit the P button one more time to see before and after. Clarity's at 44. That should be fine. So we'll move on to the next photo. <coughs> Let's see what happens if I actually apply these settings. To the second photo. So I'm going to right click and sync settings here. Hit OK. And looks pretty cool. Almost maybe too bright. And you see some of the bridge lights here kind of creeping into the frame. Maybe I'm going to use a uh, graduated filter here. If I go down to minus half a stop, do a little oops. Slide. It's kind of even out the exposure a little bit. <coughs> Should be good. I'm hitting the P button back and forth. It looks like it suits it pretty well. I might not even touch this anymore. So that's basically it. All I'm going to do is open it in Photoshop and maybe just get rid of the dust marks. I don't really think I need to add any more sharpening to it because it gets to the point where it gets too crunchy looking, too fake. So I'm just going to crop it, maybe 16-9 aspect ratio, and then I will save it and call it good. Level out the horizon here just a little bit. I'm going to keep as much of the reflection in there as I can. I don't like this thing here. Maybe. I don't like that this is kind of cropped off the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop that part out all together. <coughs> Let's get rid of these dust marks. Let's bring it to full screen. Spot healing tool. And no one's going to notice any of that unless you're specifically looking in those areas. I've got a little bit of flare on the left hand side. Uh, I don't know if I care enough to care about it. Although, I best spot. The neighbors are so freaking loud. And one last thing I'm going to do. Is I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to do a content aware fill. See how well it does. Not too bad. Oh, actually, it's pretty bad. New layer. I'm still doing this with my fingers. On the trackpad. I'm going to sample that area. Actually, I'll sample this area. You have to keep sampling that area and then repeat. Rinse and repeat. And I'm using this as a uh, 
this dark area in the water, that dark line as a kind of as a guide. I can see some subtle streaks in there, but it's better than what the content alerted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to soften that transition a little bit. Actually, this is where I probably need my tablet. Anyway, you get a basic view of that. Uh, how come I didn't? How come it did not open? It did. Let's just touch this up really quick, and we will call it good. And I guess looks fairly level. Although I don't really like this vast uh, area of darkness. <clears throat> so even though it's not 16-9 aspect ratio, I'm going to crop it in. Who cares? Get rid of these dust spots. Here, UFO. Probably it would be cool though. We have this dust spot there, and one more up here. I'm using the healing, the spot healing tool. And should be good enough. Thank you for watching.